family, it should guarantee in relation to profiting from education that everybody has the right to profit from education, meaning has the right to be able to achieve academically in school as well as anybody else, regardless of what their mother tongues are. And some of your, your data, for instance, showed that uh, that is not always the case, and we know that that is not the case for most minorities in the world. Uh, here's one of my books, 818 pages, where, uh, and the, this, this is one of those which has been, has been uh, just reprinted in India, where I have hundreds of examples of all the things that I've said so far. <clears throat> the question then is then, and now, now I'll come to the main aim in my talk, how should indigenous, uh, tribal, and minority education be organized? Firstly, what are the educational goals that should be reached? Secondly, what kind of models of education have been used, with what results? Thirdly, what is the role of the mother tongues in the various models? Uh, which models reach the goals? And what are the principles that should guide the education if we build on solid research results and not, for instance, prejudices and beliefs that uh, educational authorities may have or the state as an organization may have? Firstly, educational goals, and I see that a good educational program for both in indigenous, tribal, and minority children and dominant group children has to lead to the following goals from a languages and identity point of view. There are obviously many other types of goals, so I'm only talking about language and identity. Firstly, high levels of multilingualism, and minimally three languages in most cases. Uh, for instance, in Finland, uh, uh, Finnish, Swedish, and English, or Sami, uh, Finnish, and English, and so on. And uh, maybe French, Spanish, Russian, whatever, in, uh, in addition, but minimally three languages. Secondly, a fair chance of uh, achieving academically in school. Thirdly, a strong, positive multilingual and multicultural identity and positive attitudes not only towards self, but also towards others, including the dominant group, of course. And uh, lastly, a fair ch chance of awareness and competence building as prerequisites for working for a more equitable world for oneself and one's own group, as well as others locally and globally. So these are the educational goals that I'm going to then to see uh, whether the uh, different models can reach. If we take prototypes in, uh, in multilingual education, uh, meaning mother tongue based multilingual education, we have non models. I'm not going to talk about them. Submersion, for instance, is a, is a typical non model because it is not bilingual education or multilingual education. A weak models and multilingual education, and strong models and multilingual education. The non-models and weak models do not reach the goals. Only the strong models do. And subtractive submersion or sink or swim programs, where you throw, uh, throw in uh, the minority child in a dominant language medium uh, program, that is a sink or swim, you don't support the children, they are allowed to sink or they have to, they are forced to swim. So subtractive subversion or sink or swim programs for linguistic minority children and other minoritized children belong to non-models. Majority children also have non-models. Mainstream monolingual programs may be with some foreign language teaching as a subject. That doesn't lead to high levels of bilingualism or multilingualism. Uh, the most important pedagogical reason for both languages, for bo uh, both languages disappearing, and for so-called illiteracy—I don't know the term—because people should not be defined negatively in terms of what they do not know. People should be defined positively in terms of what they do know, and therefore that's uh, also one reason why I don't like non-dominant. So uh, the most important pedagogical reason is the wrong medium of teaching. And of course, we have other uh, reasons which are not pedagogical, like poverty, for instance, in this country. Most indigenous, tribal, and minority children and children from dominated groups are taught through the medium of dominant majority languages, subtractively, in submersion, sink, or swing programs. And uh, 
definitions, subtractive teaching through the medium of a dominant language replaces indigenous tribal or minority children's mother tongues, it subtracts from their linguistic repertoire. Whereas additive teaching, which is what we should have through the medium of the indigenous and minority mother tongues, with good teaching of the dominant language and the second language, adds to these children's linguistic repertoire and can make them high level bilingual or multilingual because they can learn both their own language and other languages well. Assimilation is subtractive, integration is additive. Assimilation is enforced subtractive learning of another dominant culture, including dominant, dominant language, by a dominated group. Assimilation means being forcibly transferred to another group which has quite a lot to do with the uh, United Nations genocide conventions uh, definitions of what genocide is. One of the definitions says exactly that. It is a genocide if children are forcibly transferred uh, from their own group to another group. Integration, uh, on the other hand, is characterized by voluntary mutual additive learning of other cultures, including other languages. Integration means a choice of inclusive group memberships. Now, what does this subtractive dominant language medium education do for indigenous, tribal, and minority children, meaning this non-model? Firstly, it prevents access to education because of the linguistic, pedagogical, and psychological barriers that it creates, and thus it violates the right to education. It also often curtails the development of the children's capabilities uh, which is something that uh, all other speakers have talked about too, and thus it perpetuates poverty. And uh, Amatya Sen, th uh, Sen thinks that poverty is not mainly about money and other financial resources. It is about curtailing capabilities, uh, preventing children from having a choice in their life. This uh, dominant language medium education is organized against solid research evidence about how best to reach high levels of bilingualism or multilingualism and how to enable these children to achieve academically in school. Uh, Robert Dunbar and I, uh, he's a human rights lawyer, uh, and I have written uh, recently a new expert paper for the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues we call it forms of education of indigenous children as crimes against humanity. And it's easily uh, downloadable either from the United Nations uh, system or from my uh, homepage. And uh, we show, among other things, the following in this. Dominant language medium education for these children can cause serious physical and mental harm. And one of the definitions, one of, there are two definitions uh, in the UN Genocide Convention, it has five definitions of genocide altogether, and two of those definitions fit uh, this kind of education, and uh, one of the definitions that fit is intentionally causing serious physical or mental harm. Okay, so we claim that we have shown that dominant language medium education can cause serious physical uh, and mental harm. So it can have harmful consequences, socially, psychologically, economically, and politically. It can cause very serious mental harm, social dislocation, psychological, cognitive, linguistic, and educational harm, and partially through this also economic, social, and political marginalization. It uh, can often also cause serious physical harm, for instance, in residential schools, boarding schools, and as a long-term result of marginalization. So we see overrepresentation of poverty, alcoholism, suicides, incest, violence, and so on, among a lot of indigenous peoples. So dominant language only submersion programs are, according to a very big study commissioned by the Maori section of the Aotearoa New Zealand Ministry of Education, these programs are widely attested as the least effective educationally for minority language students. <coughs> 